I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Sam Kim, the founding partner of Umbrella Network. Sam, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here today. Hi, Ashton. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here with you. I'm excited for you to be here and I'm excited to discuss Umbrella Network and I'd love for you to kick it off for us with a high level overview and the focus of Umbrella Network and some of the solutions that your team is providing in the industry right now. Yeah, so Umbrella Network is a community owned layer two Oracle. Um, and that's really got this two parts down, right? We believe that Oracles and data are a critical piece of infrastructure as critical almost as the root chain itself. And so it really should be uh, in the hands of the community. And therefore we uh, distribute the ownership of the tokens uh, and run a delegated proof of stake for the governance. Uh, the second part is that we are layer two. Right? We aggregate data, uh, right now 750 pieces of data uh, in a single blockchain transaction. And um, that, that allows us to decrease the cost of getting data on chain dramatically. Mm -hmm. And with lower cost data, we're able to provide more data, which has been um, one of the reasons I got into this space is because we were looking at developing blockchain applications and there just wasn't enough data available to build meaningful applications. And so mm -hmm. uh, we're solving that problem today with um, a Merkle tree based layer two solution. That's us in a nutshell. That's great. And I, I like how you say that the Oracle platform is just as important as the root blockchain. And I don't think a lot of people fully understand, you know, people understand blockchains are important and the, and the way that they're built is, is going to be the future. But a lot of people still don't under, really understand oracles uh, and why they're so necessary. Um, could you talk about <clears throat> how you started with building the Oracle? What were the primary goals of, you know, solving the simple solutions? And was it just starting with price feeds or are you really far beyond that already yeah so just i'll step back a little bit um back in 2017 i started a company called lucidity and we were using the blockchain to create transparency for digital advertising and for those of you who are familiar with digital advertising you know that it operates at incredible scale right like 500,000 to a million transactions per second is common and so obviously blockchain um especially in 2017 was unable to handle that. Therefore, we built this layer two solution there that allows us to handle that kind of volume traffic and scale. And we do it with, without compromising security. Uh, as I said, as I mentioned, uh, last October, I pursued a career in, in crypto and uh, we were looking at different project ideas. And we saw that um, there, just, there simply wasn't enough data available uh, to run a meaningful application. Um, the leading Oracle at the time, I believe it was something like 84 data pairs uh, to run your DeFi contract. Some of them updated more frequently than others. Some of them updated only once a day. And so this reminded me a little bit of back in like 2011, 2012, when I got into mobile. Uh, back then we were running on 3G. Uh, cost of data was incredibly expensive and it just wasn't a ton of it on, uh, available. But what changed was LTE happened. So all of a sudden you had this explosion of bandwidth, right? Uh, from the slow, slow, like if you have anybody that remembers the things you could do on 3G, it was, it, it's, it's can't believe that that was the world we lived in before. The games that you played were so simple and naive. Uh, the utility apps were basic uh, and inadequate. But LTE, you know, it led to that kind of growth. But at the same time, there was the growth of AWS. Right. AWS meant that getting data, storing data, uh, and using data became much, much cheaper, right? So, so it was that combination of those two things that allowed us to have, you know, playing PUBG and Fortnite on your mobile device running on, uh, I mean, uh, unbelievable, right? I could not have imagined that in 2011, mm -hmm. 2012. And so we look at where we are today uh, as a decentralized application community and the blockchain community. We're kind of at the same point, right? We're seeing this like, we're, on, we're all built on Ethereum right now. And as much as we all love Ethereum, we all have to recognize that it's it's slow and it's expensive, right? There's, there's a bandwidth issue. And then at the same time, the oracles that are serving it, there's a data issue. There's just not enough data and then mm -hmm. too expensive. And so where are we now, right? We're seeing not just, you know, this next generation of blockchain, whether 
you're talking about even you know Binance Smart Chain, whether you're talking about Polkadot, Solana, where we go, right? It's about scale, right? It's Avalanche. Um, it's about creating increasing the throughput of those pipes effectively. Um, at the same time, you know, we're working to solve the other end of that problem, right? We're trying to solve that data availability problem. Why is what can you do when data is so expensive as it is today? You can't do much, right? And so by uh, aggregating all of these data, all this data into a single blockchain transaction, we're able to increase the volume of data that's available. And um, yes, we're initially focused on DeFi um, mm -hmm. because that's where the applications are, but we see much broader applicability, right? We see it available, you know, whether you want to use weather data or sports scores, uh, we're looking at insurance and health records, get bringing that kind of stuff, data on chain. And so uh, I think we're seeing that the, that the same combination again, as we saw in 2011, 2012, where we're seeing, you know, bigger pipes as well as cheaper data, uh, they are making, you know, putting that at the hands of the developer community. It's going to be really exciting to see what people can develop, right? Like that's, that, that gets me excited, right? I really get excited to think about what um, these guys are going to be able to build when you put those two things in their hands. Definitely, Sam. And that's a great analogy, moving from 3G to LTE and, and 5G and beyond. And the bandwidth mm -hmm. of that is just exploding. And same with the decentralized finance industry right now. You know, the total value locked is going exponential. And the amount of that's DeFi really applications cool. that need oracles is going exponential. And I'm curious, you know, obviously, a lot of these applications are on Ethereum and there's that scalability issue. So having a layer two solution to be able to have more information moving into the blockchain faster and cheaper is obviously advantageous. Um, is that one of the key uh, unique competitive advantages to Umbrella Network um, is on Ethereum ap applications having that scalability or do you also have other unique competitive advantages as well? Well, Overall, we believe you know, like our mission is to get data as cheap as possible. Like we want to get it as close to zero as we possibly can, right? That's that's what it's going to take in order to have thriving, uh, high utility applications on the blockchain. And so whether we're doing that on Ethereum, which is where we are today, um, but we're also looking at other blockchains, right? Mm -hmm. Later this month, we'll be rolling out on Binance Smart Chain, mm -hmm. where our operating costs are about one percent of what it would be what it is on Ethereum. Um, it's a huge, huge difference. So, oh. you know, we do believe in the multi-chain world, um, and I think our layer two application, you know, one, it gives us that uh, lower cost, but second, it also allows us to do cross-chain and multi-chain. Um, and we've look, looked at, you know, using everything from polka dot to other solutions like phantom but um right now we're going to centralize our products on those two chains on ethereum and binance smart chain um and grow our uh make our data available on other chains through those two hubs mm -hmm. great and i was going to ask you that sam about the blockchains is obviously uh, there are a lot of other blockchains that are coming out with DeFi applications and other usable applications as well. And I'm guessing you're not, you know, Ethereum maximalist. You're more of just business maximalist. And, and wherever the the applications are that need, you know, the the yeah. that data through oracles, that's where you're going to be. Yeah, I mean, I got to admit, like Ethereum is always going to be near and dear to my heart. Right? Like, it's you know, I was um, I got into Bitcoin back in 2013, but I didn't dive head into crypto until Ethereum, right? And so mm -hmm. it will always have a special place in my heart because it's really what got me so excited and to change my life and then get into crypto uh, as deeply as I did. Um, but I do believe that it's going to be a multi-chain world, just as I believe that there's going to be many oracles that need, like mm -hmm. no chain, no oracle can serve every um, need of every single application developer. It's just the, the needs are just too varied. Um, mm -hmm. And so we recognize that, and we want to be wherever the application developers are. Right? We want to support every chain, uh, whether it's Ethereum or some of the other you know, uh, next generation chains. And we believe um, that Ethereum will always be a bit a major part of what we do. But you know, we've also believed that there's going to be successful uh, chains elsewhere. Definitely. And I like the approach of going where the community is. And you mentioned at the beginning, handing over the project to the community and getting them involved as well. And that leads me to ask about the validator system for Umbrella. Yeah. 
Um, is that really a big community initiative? Does it get the community involved? And can you just talk about the validator system overall? Yeah, I mean, that's really important to us, right? Like it's, um, you know, we can't be fully decentralized uh, running delegated proof of stake on day one. Uh, we have to first focus on the core product, which is what we're rolling out right now, right? We're on testnet, uh, we'll be on mainnet soon, we'll be one of the handful of oracles that are available on mainnet in, the, in a very short time. Um, but yeah, validators play a critical role. And so we're going to continue to move in that direction. Uh, right now we've onboarded three external validators. Uh, they are Huobi, uh, the major exchange. Uh, number two are Hashquark and Infinity Stone. They're professional validator operators who have a ton of experience um, on operating nodes. And so they've been working extremely closely with us, uh, spending, you know, an incredible amount of time to help us optimize our product uh, so that we can invite external validators uh, mm -hmm. in the near future. And we'll be opening that up to the community um, when the product and code is ready. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be asking them to, asking our community members to delegate their uh, tokens with those validators uh, who will operate in the governance of the network. You know, it's, this is, like I said, you know, it's not gonna happen overnight, I wish. I wish we could be fully decentralized like that from day one, but that's that would be irresponsible. And so uh, we're taking our time. Uh, we're going to make sure we do it right, but we're also going to make sure that we get, we're inclusive, right? We want to include the community. Uh, we want to include all those people who have dedicated so many hours to us, uh, helping us along the way, because they're the ones that are going to ensure the integrity of the system and the network. So um, we'll, we'll be there soon. I think it's the great first steps and having some strong initial validators uh, it sounds like you're on the right path already. And you yeah. did mention there delegating tokens. And I'm curious, the umbrella token, the UMB token, can yeah. you just talk about, uh, um, obviously it's going to be used for the validation. What are the other use cases for it? And does it create a sustainable ecosystem for the network? Absolutely. First, you know, one thing is that uh, we are not using it as a, to as a payment token. Uh, we believe, you know, our token, our native token, it's, too volatile as a token for, for anybody to run a business, right? Um, mm -hmm. a, a blockchain developer building a new application, they need to have predictability of cost in order to run a sustainable business. And uh, as much as I would love our, for our token to be a stable price, um, or steadily increasing at least, um, it, it, it's not, it's up, it goes up and down. And so payments will be via a stable coin, um, but mm -hmm. Where the token comes into play is those two areas. But first, it's uh, the delegating and electing validators and um, node operators to be uh, participating in consensus. Uh, number two will be in the actual consensus um, process. Right? We want a proof of stake, and um, you know we will reward uh, the validators for properly voting properly. Uh, and with the majority, and we will slash for improper behavior. Mm -hmm. So really two parts, right? It's the, it's the governance aspect where the tokens are used to elect government, uh, the, to elect uh, members of, of the governance, and then number two, the proof of stake part. Great, and thank you for that, Sam. And you did mention that you're in testnet, you're on the lead to mainnet. Can you give a snapshot of you know, the upcoming uh, roadmap or milestones for the next six months or when you expect uh, mainnet and what it's going to take to get there? Yeah, so we've been on testnet uh, for a little shy of a, of a month now. Um, and it's really been focused on working with the validators to um, weather this system, right? To make sure it's battle tested and, and can handle the scale. I mean, we know that our layer two can handle scale, scale because we use that at my prior company, previous company, the city, where we were handling like, you know, 100,000 plus transactions a second. Um, but in terms of having third party validators operating it, we want to make sure that it's the lowest, it's, you know, it's lean, it's low cost uh, and efficient. Next, we'll be um, supporting Binance Smart Chain this month. Uh, and we're, we are going very heavily into Binance Smart Chain. We, the cost advantages are tremendous. The community is growing rapidly. And honestly, they could benefit uh, from the data that we're going to be able to provide at the cost that we provide at. Um, from there, mainnet will probably will be um, in this early in the early summer uh, on Ethereum. 
And then from there, you know, it's going to be continued optimization, um, you know, getting developers on board um, and growing the network, really. That's going to be the focus. We'll always keep an eye on additional chains uh, as they come on, come on line and uh, look at supporting them. Looking forward to it, Sam. And with that said, and we're running out of time, but for the viewers, uh, what's the best way for them to follow along with these updates as they come out, learn more about Umbrella Network, and, and potentially get involved? Yeah, we have a, uh, we're really active on Twitter and Telegram, of course. And you can find links to those from uh, our website, which is unb.network. And um, yeah, we follow it actively. Um, we continue to do AMAs on, on our Telegram or on third parties as well, third party channels as well. And um, oh, also on Discord, that's where um, I tend to answer a lot more questions personally uh, than on Telegram. So uh, please join us, join the community, uh, learn more about participating in Umbrella, uh, whether as a member of the community or a validator, or if you're a developer, you know, come out and let us know. We'd love to have you guys join us on testnet, uh, help us, you know, find the issues and the bugs, uh, and let's grow Umbrella together. Great, Sam. I will leave all those links in the description box below as well. All the best with Umbrella Network moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Thanks, Ashton.